Hi friends, guess what we're trying today? You guessed it, the new Rare Beauty blushes. These have been going around all over Instagram and TikTok. I've heard many different opinions on this. So I received this in PR and I was like, listen, I've got to try this out for myself. Half of me is really excited and half of me has some reservations about just this type of formula. It's very luminous. I really wanted to know how this compares to some of my other favorite luminous blushes. It's not like I'm against a glowy blush. It just has to have the right amount of glow. So we're gonna see how these look. I'm gonna swatch all the colors on my face. We're gonna compare it to the Hourglass and RMS blushes, which are some of my favorite more glowy baked blush formulas. So let's get into it. There's no denying that this is a very pretty product. Here's what the PR package looks like. How fun is this? They launched this new blush in six shades. It retails for $26. Most of these are inspired by their liquid blushes, which we all know and love, but there is one shade that's new, and it's actually the shade that I feel like I'm the most excited to try. I mean, come on, those are so pretty, but the question is, are they gonna be as pretty on the face as they are in pictures? There's only one way to find out. So from what I understand, this product was inspired originally by their highlighter, which is also a baked formula. This is something that launched a while ago. It's a very glowy highlight. And basically the idea was to take their liquid blushes and combine it with that formula. And then this was born. It's the same shape as the highlight, but a different color and a slightly different finish. This has a matte exterior where the other one is more glossy, but here is one of the shades. This is the color that I'm the most excited about. This is called Cheer and it's like a really pretty light pink. I mean, there's no denying how pretty this is, but we gotta put it on the face to really get a full opinion on this. This says it's an airy silky powder blush that brings instant life to your cheeks with a fresh radiant flush that lasts. Let's not waste any more time. We're gonna go into this shade first. I don't know how much to use. I'm gonna do Cheer on this side of the face, just kind of pressing it into the skin. Usually when it comes to a glowy blush, I like to apply it a little bit higher on the face just so that it gives like a highlighting effect. I did not put on any highlight today so we could really see. Okay, that's a really nice, very soft pink color. And honestly, a small amount does not emphasize texture the way that I thought. Any sort of glowy product over top of texture is going to emphasize it. I think that looks really pretty though. This is the shade that I was most excited about because I thought that it could act as more of a highlighter for my skin tone. So here we have Cheer all over the face. The next shade we're gonna try is Hope. And again, the rest of these are inspired by existing shades. Here is Hope. This one's really pretty as well. This is also a nice like peachy pink, but you can see how it is a bit deeper than Cheer. Okay, we're gonna try Hope on the other side of the face. Just gonna dip the same brush. I did wipe off the brush on my Sigma Switch. Let's add this to the other side of the face. Okay, these are very, very pearlescent. The nice thing is they're very fine. So it does melt into the skin, but I feel like you have to build it up quite a bit to get like a blush worthy pigmentation, which is what I was wondering as well. I was wondering if this would work better as like a topper versus an actual blush. Cause if you go overboard, I feel like then it does start to emphasize any texture there. Still very pretty, but I'm leaning toward this side. I like it a little better and I feel like ultimately it gives a very similar effect. I guess it has a little bit more of a toasted undertone, but there you have it. Here is Hope swatched all over the cheek. All right, we have a clean slate. We're ready to try more shades. Next up, we're gonna try the shade Joy. This is a really fun shade in their liquid formula. So I'm excited to see how it translates in this formula. Ooh, this one looks really pretty. I'm gonna switch brushes just to make sure we're not combining any of the colors. We're gonna dip into this and start pressing this into the cheeks. Okay, this one, since it's a bit deeper, is definitely showing up a little bit more since it has a more intense like base color that's showing up. Whoops. I applied a little too much right there and things are looking wild. Okay, so I learned just now, first of all, avoid the pores at all costs. <laughs> Second of all, a very small amount is what you're gonna wanna use. The more I try to build this up as like a full blush, the worse it looks, but it looks really nice as like a soft layer. At least that's how I feel with this shade. So here's Joy all over the cheeks. Next up, we're gonna try the shade Love. Ooh, this one's like a really nice terracotta peach. Let's try this on the other side. I'm gonna try to be a little more gentle with how much I apply. It got a little patchy right there. So I'm just trying to blend that in. Okay, I'm nervous to apply any more than that, especially around this area. So we're gonna stop there, but hopefully you can see this one's a lot more toasted than this color, but here's Love all over the cheeks. 
Okay, we reset the cheeks again. We have two more shades to try. Next, we're gonna try out Happy. This is one of my most used shades of the liquid blush. It's just a great go-to pink color. Look how pretty that is. It looks so nice. Let's try this one out. I'm just gonna start pressing that into the cheeks. So this one has a much stronger pink base than some of those lighter pinks. I don't wanna apply any more than that. I feel like if I start to, it starts to look very texture emphasizing. But if I do the right amount, it like looks really pretty. So here's Happy all over the face. Last but not least, we have the shade Truth which is a beautiful kind of berry color. I'm excited to wear this one. This is the deepest shade in the collection. Let's see how this goes. I'm just gonna tap the brush lightly into that and start to work it into the skin. I feel like this one on me is looking pretty patchy just because that pigment is a lot deeper than my skin tone, so it's not as forgiving on me as the other shades. I'm still able to blend it, which is good. And again, I don't wanna really apply more than that. But here's Truth all over the cheek. Before we reset again, and I'm gonna wear what I feel like is my favorite shade, I did wanna compare this firstly to the reflect that's in the baked highlighter to see if it's actually as shimmery as a highlight or if it's a little toned down. Then I wanna compare it next to some of my favorite more glowy blushes to see if any of those formulas compare. And depending on your skin type and what you're looking for, which formula I would recommend, because I don't feel like this is gonna be for everyone. But let's answer some of those questions. So I'm gonna take the shade Happy for this demo. This is a very microfine, smooth formula. It's really, really beautiful. I'm gonna build this up on the back of my hand so that we can try to get as much of a reflect as possible. Next to that, I'm gonna swatch the highlighter in the shade Enlighten. It really is the same formula, just not quite as many pearls. At least it doesn't look like it to me. I'm blending this in and you can see, while it's definitely glowy, the highlighter does have a little bit more pearl to it. This one has slightly less. It's still a very glowy blush though, but I think it's interesting to see side by side that it is in fact the same formula, just slightly less pearl, but not too much less. Like it's definitely a very glowy, glowy blush. It honestly leans more highlighter in my eyes. It just happens to have a little bit more of like a blush base color. So the next question I want answered is how this finish compares to some of my other faves, namely the Hourglass, which I know a lot of you guys love. And then also the RMS blush, which is very glowy, but I really love this one. So we're gonna see, actually this color is kind of similar, which is interesting. We're gonna go into Rare Beauty right here. I'm gonna get it swatched and then I'll show you up close how the finishes compare. So there is Rare Beauty Happy. In the middle, I'm gonna swatch the RMS. This is a different formula. It's more of like a gel formula, but it gives a very similar effect, I feel. Okay, here's that one, which I'll show you up close, but I can see already it's less pearly than the Rare Beauty. Then we're gonna swatch next to that the Ambient Lighting Blush from Hourglass which honestly looks matte almost compared to the other two. Let me show you up close. Look at how these vary. So you can see, while this one is glowy, this one does have more pearl. So the Rare Beauty one is in fact the most pearlescent. What's so interesting is how the Hourglass one looks basically matte next to these two. I'm really hoping this is picking up on camera the way it is in person. Um, I love the RMS formula. It does have a little less reflect and the base of it is a little more smoothing than the Rare Beauty. And I'm like still shocked by the finish of the Hourglass. It's basically matte in comparison to those other blushes. After swatching all the shades, I'm gonna reset the cheeks and I'm gonna show you how I personally feel like this formula should be worn. Obviously there's no rules with makeup, but I'm here just trying to like help you out and try to help you feel the most confident in your makeup, especially when playing with very luminous blush. A lot of us have texture here, so I'll show you what I have in mind. We'll see if it works. I think it will based on how the formula looked when I swatched everything. So let me just set everything with powder. I think this is actually a really good point to make. You saw in one of the swatches, there was a part of my face that was not set with powder and the pigment of the highlight kind of grabbed in that area and looked a little patchy. So because this is a powder formula, I would recommend setting it with powder. That's not only gonna ensure a nice blend, but it's also going to help you not overdo the pigment when it comes to this formula, which is key, I learned. I learned the hard way with the one shade, but. Okay, since the Hourglass blush was basically matte compared to 
the Rare Beauty one. I'm gonna actually take this one and create a little bit of a color base lower on the cheek. So I'm going right here, kind of right next to the contour to just start to create a little something. You can see this actually adds a really nice healthy glow. So if you're worried about texture being emphasized, a formula like this might be your best bet, but you'll still get essentially that look that you're wanting without compromising what you're not wanting, you know? All right, so I've got like a base going with that hourglass blush. And how I personally feel like I'm gonna wear this product is first of all to choose a shade that's a little bit closer to your skin tone than not. Um, I feel like that's gonna give you the most natural look with this. So for me, Cheer is the lightest shade. I'm gonna go in with this one. And with this, I'm gonna take just a little bit. And because we started here, I'm going to apply this halfway on the blush, like kind of meeting where we left off and then the rest a little bit higher as more of a highlight. I'm not dipping back into the pan to get pigment from this. I don't feel like that's gonna be the most flattering. I think a little bit is best with this. And I'm just kind of like patting and buffing that into the other color. And I'm avoiding this. <laughs> I'm avoiding this area, keeping it more up here where I don't have as much texture. I mean, I sometimes do, but I don't feel like it's emphasizing too, too much. Then I'm gonna take my sponge. I always do this with my blushes and just kind of press into the skin to give it even more of a skin-like finish. I'm even gonna go as far as taking a little bit more of my Huda Beauty powder and blurring this over top so that it kind of softens any of those pearly pigments that may have accidentally gotten in that area. I just don't, I don't like to have my pores emphasized with a highlight no matter what formula it is. Okay, I feel like that looks really, really nice, but a little goes a long way. I really think that's gonna be the key with this formula. And if you've tried it and you can't seem to get it to work, maybe you're just using too much. But I personally think this is really pretty. I feel like the right amount gives that glow from within without looking too overdone. I think this product you could definitely overdo very quickly. So make sure you're using a light hand. From my first impressions, I'm actually more pleasantly surprised than I thought going into this. I thought I really wasn't gonna like this, to be honest, just because it was so glowy. But again, I think if you use it more toward the high points of the cheeks, acting as a blush topper slash highlight blend, which I feel like it is, it's more of a highlight than a blush, in my opinion, with the finish, I think you're gonna really like it. With that being said, it's definitely not going to be for those of you who do not want to emphasize texture. No matter what the product is, any sort of pearly pigment, whether it's in a primer or a liquid highlight or a powder highlight, if you put that over texture, it's going to emphasize it. So this does have much more of a pearly formula than some of the other popular ones that I compared them to, being Hourglass and RMS. So if you're not sure, like if you don't have really clear skin here. I don't know if you would love it as much. Again, if you wanna have a similar effect, but you don't wanna compromise, you know, the texture looking too highlighted, I would say try Hourglass, and even the RMS one is a little less pearly, and I feel like the base of this has a little bit more of like a smoothing property to it. So you would be better off using either of these formulas alone to kind of get that actual you know, build up of a pigmentation versus having to layer it like I would suggest with this. So keep that in mind as well. I did notice that as I built this up more and more and more on the cheeks, it just looked worse and worse and worse. So if you're wanting to have like quite a bit of a pop of color, either layer this on top of a more matte, brighter blush to create a base first or use a very small amount and don't make it like your actual blush color. That's just my suggestion based off of trying it today. Before I forget, I wanted to show you the shades all next to each other swatched on my arm so you can see the comparison because I know we did cheek swatches, but sometimes it's nice to see them all lined up. Here they are swatched. We have Cheer, Hope, and Joy, and then we have Happy, Love, and Truth. So for me, I feel like this is actually really, really beautiful. I like the very, very fine pigmentation of this. I do not personally think you need every shade. As tempting as it is, they're all so pretty to look at. You've got to think about which one is going to actually work best for your skin tone. For me, it's this one. I really, really like this because I feel like it actually allows me to get that hybrid between a blush and a highlight without looking uh, misplaced. 
So for me, this is gonna be my most used by far. I will not be using these alone as a blush. They're a topper in my mind. So if that's something that you don't wanna do, maybe it adds an extra step, maybe this isn't the product for you. I've heard a lot of people really love this and a lot of people don't really love it because it is more pearly than most. But for me, I feel like I really did love it, but I think you have to use it the right way and get the right shade. And if you do that, I think it looks really pretty. It kind of gives that glass skin finish as long as you don't go over the top. Like, I really like how this looks. I think it just makes my skin look healthy, which is what we're all hoping to do with makeup in general, right? At least that's what I look for. All right, I hope you guys found this video helpful. For me, I feel like it's a really nice product, but you have to proceed with caution. So if it's something that you're on the fence about, definitely go see if you can swatch these in stores. I feel like that's gonna give you a better idea at which shade might best suit you, as well as if it's gonna emphasize texture for you or not. I think if used right, these are really, really nice, but if you use too much or maybe the wrong color for you, I feel like it actually will not look great. So. Take that for what it's worth. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you guys have tried this product. Let me know if it's worked for you or not. I know everyone's kind of on the fence, but you know, that's makeup in general. All of us have different tastes and all of us have different skin tones, skin types. So a product is not going to work for everyone, but I wanna hear from you. So let me know in the comments down below. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I would love for you to join the family and also give this video a thumbs up if you like this type of video. Let me know what other products are out there that you would like to see me review or compare to other things. I hope some of your questions were answered. If you're interested in checking these out, as always, I will have them linked down below for you. And yeah, that's it for me today. I hope you guys have an amazing day wherever you are and I will see you in my next video. Love you. Bye.